Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today I'm having on Amy Cross from the Cross Legacy. She is an expert on keeping produce fresh, on budgeting and meal planning, and basically using up everything that you bring into your house that you don't spend a million bajillion dollars on healthy food and then come to find out that you just waste it all. That is not what we want to happen. And Amy has really figured out how to teach people in a very effective way. She actually had something go viral when she first started her online business of educating people on this very simple hack that helps you to keep produce fresh for a month, like strawberries fresh for, I think she says three weeks. Anyways, she has lots of good tips. So let's dive into this interview. My name is Lisa, mother of seven and creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for joining me. I have seen your strawberries. <laughs> we'll get into that for everybody who's like, wait, what? Strawberries? Uh, around the internet. So let's start off with introductions. Tell us about you and your blog, your YouTube, Instagram, whatever you want to share. Well, my name is Amy Cross, and I started The Cross Legacy, um, which started as an Instagram and a blog because of you. So I'm like super excited to be here because you have literally changed my life. But I started a blog and it has went viral and I am changing lives all around the world. So I've had a TED talk because of strawberries with with this post going viral. (laughs) So yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's just get that out of the way. Tell us about your viral strawberries in a jar hack and what what that is and this is the time of the year because it's about to be strawberry season um right at like july 2021 right in the middle of the pandemic i was bored (laughs) and we were in the middle of a kitchen remodel and my business was closed and like everything was shut down and i started answering questions on other people's social media sites when they were asking like i want to go to the grocery store but i'm scared to or my blueberries are only lasting four days. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like my blueberries in the fridge are over a month old. And it like blew up on the shelf cooking site, Jordan Page's site. And she messaged me and she's like, Amy, you have something here. You need to like start an Instagram. You need to do something. So that last weekend in June, I started an Instagram called the cross legacy, which is our family name or our family. Our last name was cross, but the cross legacy is like our family motto. And, um, so I started the Instagram and then that first weekend of July, my husband had tore down everything in our kitchen and we were down to the studs. And so I <laughs> literally sat in the office that whole 4th of July weekend and listened to you and your videos over and over on the um, create your own blog course. And okay, I started yeah. the blog that weekend. So July 3rd, 2021, I put up strawberries in a jar just something I had in my fridge, something I knew about. I was just literally trying to learn how to make a blog. (laughs) Like I Uh didn't even think anybody would care about my strawberries. And so I wrote out all the instructions for it. And then I put it on Instagram. And a couple weeks later, it went absolutely viral because my strawberries last three weeks. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it went viral. Did you say like 18 million people or something like that have seen it. It was shared 18 million times, like just in a a couple days. (laughs) And now it gets shared over a million times. That's super. Wait, what'd you say now it's been? It it gets shared over a million times every month now. Oh my word. Okay. So my sister and I were just talking about this yesterday for people to understand like how viral that is. I've never had, okay, in all of my career, because I, you know, I do YouTube, I do Instagram, I do reels, and I have I have stuff on TikTok. I've only had one piece of content ever exceed 1 million, ever. And I mean, like, lifetime. <laughs> I thought I probably would have had more than that, but I was actually looking at my YouTube um, just last night because my sister and I were talking about, like, our most popular videos just out of curiosity. And I do have one video on YouTube that got well over a million. But all of my Instagram reels, all of my TikToks, nothing's gotten over a million. So, like, wow, that is super viral. So tell us about what what it even is. What is the strawberry in a jar trick? So when you 
when you wash your produce, when you bring it home, I use 5% distilled white vinegar. It's killing off the mold spores, E. coli, listeria, and any other harmful pathogens. But over the years, I've developed a technique to do it so they don't get all mushy or ferment it. So other people okay. that have tried to con- um, copy me over the last year and a half, like they're telling people to soak their berries for 15 minutes, that will destroy them. So you okay. need to soak them for two minutes in a bowl and set a timer because we're we're moms. <laughs> we get distracted. Yeah, right. Yes. Um, set, set a timer. It's a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar in a large bowl of water for two minutes. And then you rinse them off because the water is so dirty, you will want the rinse stuff. <laughs> you will uh-huh. see after you wash berries for the first time. And then you lay them out on the counter to dry. And it takes about three to four hours for your produce to dry. And then you put it in a glass jar with a paper towel at the bottom and a lid. And they will stay okay. fresh for three weeks. So blackberries wow. and raspberries stay fresh for like two and a half to three weeks. Strawberries stay fresh right around that three week mark. Grapes will stay fresh for four to six weeks and blueberries stay fresh for six to eight weeks. Okay. So this works for pretty much all fruits. Have you tried this with different vegetables too? We actually have a book that has 50 of the top produce items and how to get them to stay fresh for a whole month. So my lettuce stays fresh for a month, parsley six to eight weeks. Um, And then we have other tips like in the summer book of I bought it now what of how to like reduce fruit flies that are coming into your house. So like Uh are the worst things to bring into your house for fruit flies. And if you can wash the crown part of the pineapple, the pineapple upside down in a large um, like stock pot of water first, that will kill off any fruit flies that you're bringing into your house. Okay. Interesting. So where did you learn about how to take care of produce? This has become your niche probably pretty much by accident, it sounds like. Like what were you what were you planning to blog about? And then also like where did you learn all of these tricks? I'm a foster mom. Those are two questions. <laughs> yeah. I'm a foster mom. And so when I started um, blogging, I just had a calling on my heart for generational change and to help other young moms go through different seasons of their lives. I never thought that it would be my fridge. <laughs> That I'd be talking about every single yeah. day. That it was just a happy <laughs> it's accident. Important. You're right. Yeah. It's my calling, mm-hmm. all those kind of things. So when I first started the everything, I just thought I just had a calling on my heart to want to reach out to other moms and help them through hard times. So I ironically have not talked at all about being a foster mom on my blog <laughs> or anything um, about that. It's all been about produce, but I grew up on a 200 acre farm um, as like a fifth generational farm. So I grew up thinking harvest season to harvest season. And then we're, you know, we have a, we live in a town, but we have a backyard garden and chickens and mm-hmm. I can and different things. So I'm always thinking about how long something will last and when the next harvest yeah. season is going to be. And um, our big thing is the average family throws away 61% of the food that they're buying. What? According to the world. Yeah. 61%. (laughs) The world economic People, if that's true, you need to do better than that. That's just ridiculous. I feel like I throw away next to nothing. Next to nothing. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So the average family for the average for a while has been said that it was 30 to 40 percent. And then the World Economic Forum came out in April last year saying it was 61 percent globally Hmm. for household food waste. So if we're spending a thousand dollars on groceries a month, people are throwing away six hundred dollars of the groceries that they're bringing home. Yeah, that that's just crazy. If I like my kids, I get them all a glass of milk. And like, if they leave this much milk, I throw that into my meatloaf or something, you know, I'm just like, what what could I throw this in? You know, it's not going to be the sink. So I can see how where you're positioned here with this knowledge is so timely, the pandemic, especially, but then I think it's opened a lot of our eyes to a lot of things, cooking healthy, gardening, that's all something that is majorly on the rise. So yeah, it makes sense that this would be something that people are really seeking. And there you were with your strawberry trick that I've never heard before. So yeah, so you learned as a kid because of gardening, is this something your mom figured out, like put a little bit of vinegar? What's the science behind it? It kills off some of the bacteria that keeps or that makes the strawberry deteriorate? Yeah, so it's killing off the mold spores, E. coli, listeria, other harmful pathogens that are on it. Um, I buy organic or grow organic, so I don't worry about pesticides on it as much. But um, 
I learned it mostly from our neighbor lady growing up. So she was 102 um, and she had been like lifetime friends with my grandpa. And I would consider her like almost a grandma in my life. So a lot Mm -hmm. of the things that I learned about harvesting and um, preparing things were from um, Mrs. Cooper of Cooper's Corner. (laughs) And so that was really special. And then my grandma was a canner and um, preserved food and then growing up on a farm. Yeah. So my mom was actually a logger. So oh wow, (laughs) Uh, she didn't spend as much time in the kitchen. She was out in the woods with my dad. Oh, that's cool. Want to take a break from this episode to tell you about one of our awesome sponsors, Toops and Co. That's T O U P S and Co. I've had a few questions about that lately. I'm like, what are you saying again? All of the sponsors will be linked down in the show notes as well as on simplefarmhouselifepodcast.com. But Toops and Co. is an organic skincare company that I couldn't speak more highly of. I actually just did my makeup because I like to do my makeup before I come out and record, no matter what kind of day it's been. I have the Tubes & Co. foundation, the mascara. I'm trying to remember what else I have. I have several of their things, and I absolutely love it. It's really hard to find a foundation especially that is both quality and good for you. I've struggled with that for years. I even dabbled in making my own for a while. It was really greasy, sort of worked out, but definitely did not have the quality of Tubes & Co. where I actually feel like I'm wearing a foundation. I also really love their skincare products, so I love their cleansing oil. They have this tallow balm that, especially in the winter, I'm starting to not need it as much. I would go to my little tallow balm container five times a day. I just left it out on my bathroom where I pass by often and put it on my face all throughout the day. Now that it's not as dry because we're not running the wood stove, I'm able to do it like once a day and I'm totally fine. But such a luxurious balm that moisturizes the face, but then it also has all natural and organic ingredients, which is really hard to find quality and something that works. Tubes & Co. is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners a 10% off discount by using the code FARMHOUSE. So head over to tubesandco.com, use the code FARMHOUSE to save 10%. I know that you're going to absolutely love their products. A little goes a long way. I haven't had to replace them for a while. I'm almost ready to replace the foundation. And I do a different shade from winter to summer. So I'm in that transition phase of like, I almost need a slight shade darker, which is a good time to get a new foundation. But I know that you are going to absolutely love it. Again, tubesandco.com. Use the code FARMHOUSE. So have you branched into a lot of canning and freezing and freeze drying or are you, I mean, I think that there'd be a focus on all of it, like how to keep stuff fresher longer, but then also how to put it away for a longer term. So you can't see behind me, but um, behind me is all of our canned items. Then we have another room of canned items. I, I thought I'd be talking more about canning and preserving things for long term. But mostly I'm just talking to the average mom that's trying to buy groceries for their family and have groceries in their house. Recently, we started working on this HOPE project. It's it's home a pantry education project with our local food bank. And so we're spending a lot of time trying to teach them when they bring things home, how to keep it fresh longer so they're able to use it and um, be able to feed their families more. So I batch cook um, meals. Um, I have reflective sympathetic dystrophy, so I don't always have good days. And I batch cook um, meals often and then put them in the freezer. And then we have like a longer term storage. Um, But most of what I'm talking about is the everyday grocery shopping um, to help moms or families, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of your other tricks? Like you said, you keep greens for how long did you say? So lettuce will normally stay fresh for about a month. And then cilantro and parsley will stay fresh for around six to eight weeks. So carrots and celery about six weeks. Okay. So what are the tricks for that? Because if you just put it in the fridge, in the plastic that it came in, it's not going to stay good that long. Right. For celery and I keep saying celery. For cilantro and (laughs) parsley, you want to wash it when you bring it home in the vinegar water and you trim off the ends and then you put it in your filtered water. I have a Berkey because of you. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. um, I put it I put it in filtered water in the fridge in a jar. So it looks like you have flowers in the fridge. And then around okay. every 10 days, I just trim the ends again. 
and then I add more filtered water to it. So you can do the same thing with asparagus and broccoli also, and they will stay fresh for around a month. So you just want to trim the ends around 10 days, which open up the vascular system of the plant. Okay. So they're essentially staying alive. Like you're putting it in water, like a bouquet Mm -hmm. of flowers and it's keeping them alive for a lot longer. Yeah, that makes sense. What about mixed greens, you know, package that you get from Aldi or Walmart? So I don't often buy um, already cut lettuce when it gets recalled all of the time, all of the time. That's very, very true. Yes. mm -hmm. So when you're bringing home a head of romaine or whatever lettuce that you're using and you're washing it and cutting it, you're protecting your family for one. And to save you money, it will save you money to just go ahead and buy the whole head and use it. And so I wash that when I bring it home, I lay it out to dry. I always say when I'm going to put it away in the glass container, that I make sure that it looks like an umbrella with the stem at the top of it, because it'll continue to release moisture as it's drying and not like a boat. So when you're laying those leaves into your container, you don't want it to look like a boat where that moisture that does get released, you know, in the next couple of weeks, it'll sit down in the that stem part of it and it will turn brown. Um, mm-hmm. So I normally do that. And then lettuce will stay fresh for a month um, if you wash it and put it in your fridge. So which is important because we only go to the grocery store once every three weeks. Okay. So we have a grocery budget of $135 per person, and we only go to the grocery store once every three weeks. So I know exactly, like, I haven't been to the store in three weeks, and I still have fresh this, this, and this in my fridge that I can make meals with. Okay, so let's talk a bit about that. The budget, the meal plan, this is something especially new moms and new cooks struggle with figuring out. I think that's probably where most of this comes from when you say people throw away 60% of their food. It's probably not necessarily that things are going bad on them as they just bought the wrong amount. Maybe they didn't think about what it would actually go in. And so it just sat in there too long. I mean, it definitely helps to extend it for sure. But also they may made, maybe didn't have a plan for what they were going to use it in. So let's talk about that, like budget and meal plan. You said you have a very specific budget. So where do we start with that? What what are your favorite sources for groceries? Well, if it's summertime, I go to like the farmer's market more often. Um, but, mm-hmm. but since I'm talking to like a worldwide audience and I want them to be able to go shopping like I do, I, I shop mostly at Costco first and then I go to our local Fred Meyers, which is probably okay. Kroger in your area. Yeah. And those are the two main grocery stores that I go to. Um, I think you asked me like four different questions. There. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> well, I was I was introducing the broader topic of meal planning and budgeting. Then I'm like, hmm, where do we even start with this? Because how to get into how exactly you do things that, you know, like, where do I even begin to ask you? I, I'll give you a whole bunch of information here. Okay. Yes, yes. I'll just give you a whole bunch of information. (laughs) Perfect. Sounds great. And not worry about actually answering the questions. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds really good. Thank you. (laughs) So one of the things that used to take us to the grocery store all of the time was needing avocados because avocados like seem like they go bad in just a couple days. So over the years, I have learned that if you buy organic avocados and organic bananas, even if you don't care about pesticides and anything else, for those two items, they're going to save you money because conventional items, they are sprayed. And um, with ethylene, when they they come from the ship, you know, they get sprayed in the warehouse, they get put on the trucks, and all of a sudden you have perfect avocados or bananas when you get to the store. And then like three days later, they seem like they're black and they're horrible and you don't know what yes. happened. Right. So those two items, if you buy them organic, they're not sprayed and they just naturally ripen like they're supposed to. So for no other reason, spend the little bit of extra money and buy those two items organic. But I have learned over the years because I just like the way that they looked in the refrigerator that I found like a magic trick when you put lemons and avocados together in the crisper jar, Mm -hmm. they will actually stay fresh for over a month. Oh, they're produce buddies and they stay fresher longer. So when I learned that trick and I learned that my avocados were staying fresher longer, 
then I was able to spread out my grocery shopping trips. So first it went from like, oh, honey, every day was stopping at the store to like, right. oh, go a whole week without going to the grocery store. And at the time we had a whole house full of littles. So getting through a whole week without going to the grocery store yeah, seemed like a big a deal. Big deal. Mm -hmm. And then over the last couple of years, we've pushed it out because I can keep all the produce fresh. We've pushed it out to where we only go grocery shopping once every three weeks and we can keep our fridge full of fresh produce. We keep things rotated. But it was learning that secret, you know, magic trick of the avocados that ended up being able to let us go to the grocery store less often. But how often do you go into the grocery store to get something as simple as an avocado and you walk out pushing a cart full and you oh, don't yeah. really have a plan for it? You don't know what happened and yes. you have hungry kids with you and they're grabbing stuff or husbands <laughs> that are grabbing extra things. So yeah. for for what we normally buy, we're an allergy family. So I normally stock organic single ingredient items for most everything that we buy because we have so many allergies um, in the household and I want to make sure that I have the best quality of things that we do. I was laughing this time because we posted a picture the other day of me going grocery shopping and we had cocoa pebbles um, on the picture. And I was just like, I don't know if we want to show that, but I think it's a good thing to show <laughs> too, because my husband went grocery shopping with me. He hasn't been to the store with me in four months. Like that was his special treat and something that he wanted. And it's not something that we buy all the time. Like literally once every four months, yeah. I can buy a box of whatever cereal he wants. Right. And it's oh, okay, yeah. You know? And so that balance uh -huh. between this being, you know, I have to have everything organic. It has to be all these things and meet all of our allergy and health requirements too. This is a special yeah, treat. In the budget. It. Yeah. In the budget. And he's only getting this once every few months. Like it's fine with me, you know? Yes. Yes. So <laughs> just kind of learning what that balance is in your life too helps. Yeah. To what extent are you meal planning before going to the grocery store? Do you have just a handful of your favorites or are you more of a rigid, like this is what we're having for the next, you know, three weeks, breakfast, lunch, dinner. How does that look for you so that you don't have any food waste? I honestly hate meal planning. I hate it. I hate it. Like I, I don't know what I want to wear tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be 80 degrees or 40 degrees. Yeah. I have reflective sympathetic dystrophy, which is a like a pain and joint issue. So some days I have really good days and I don't mind standing in the kitchen and other days I need mm -hmm. something I can pull out of the freezer and it can be done within a few minutes. So to plan out what we're eating for three weeks is it never will be something that I will do. <laughs> yeah, I'm really honest about that. We're like laughing because we're we're building building a meal planner, but at the same time, it's teaching people not how to meal plan, but to have the food uh -huh. in your house that you need. But I normally have the same ingredients in the house. Like I know right. that we buy our meat once a year, so I know what I have for meat in our house. You know, it's in the freezer. I know what I can pull out, but we always have the same basic, you know, pantry items. And then seasonally, we have different produce, but I know those basic ingredients that I keep stocked in the house. And then seasonally, we have some different things, but being able to meal plan first by looking what's in your refrigerator that needs to be right. used up, what's in the freezer I can pull from, and then, you know, then thinking about what I can add to go to the grocery store. So I hear all the time, like, oh, I have $55 to get me to payday, or I have $85 and I need that to make 10 meals. Well, what do you have in your house that you can make meals already? Like, mm -hmm. you know, do you have pasta? Do you only need to grab sauce? Do you, you know, like, what do you already have? Do you have eggs? Do you have flour? Can you make pancakes? You know, and like, people don't even think about what they have in their house right now that they can be using up. It's just what can they get at the grocery store? And just switching that mindset. Yeah, you have to look in there and you have to think about it a little bit because you don't have something that would fit into a nice recipe. You have a lot of random things that you have to come up with something for. And I'm sure by the end of your three weeks, you have a lot of stuff that probably doesn't make like any meal that would ever be on any recipe. So how at the end of that, like what are your meals looking like? What are some go to's? at the end of your three weeks? Yeah, our, our meals don't change very much. They, they really are 
same the whole way through. Um, I yeah. plan when we're, you know, buying our produce that I know things that are going to last towards the end. So normally like asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, those are items that last for sure for three weeks. Sometimes I've already went to the grocery store again and I'm using up last time's, you know, items. Okay, for those. Yeah. And then, you know, having the fresh meat and being able to use it different ways. You know, the other day we wanted hamburgers and we were planning on making hamburgers. And then all of a sudden it started raining and it was like, okay, well, I can make those into sloppy joes and we can still have, you know, the same meal that, you know, this we used the same protein and kind of had the same meal. And because of weather, you know, changed our mind of right, what yeah. we were doing. So we do um, get milk delivery here straight to our house. So that does come every two weeks. Oh, that's cool. So we, yeah, there's a local dairy here that my grandpa actually was part of that dairy circle like 80 years ago. And so he milked for those. Anyways, part of my family history, but. That is so cool. But the milk gets delivered here every two weeks, um, which helps. So when we didn't have that, then we would have milk from the store for like two weeks. And then I would supplement with like almond milk and different things that were shelf stable to get us through that. We the are. third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, I was just interviewing somebody recently who she actually freezes milk and I should have gotten into asking her how exactly she does that, but she used to grocery shop once a month and she just would freeze milk. I think she said she freezes it, you know, if you're, if it's store-bought right in the mm-hmm. plastic jugs. Yeah, the plastic jugs are made to go straight into the freezer. So that's why there's oh, okay. that little indent on the side of it. So the card oh. milk you have to Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're made to I go into know the this. freezer. Yeah. <laughs> if you get them in the plastic, we get them in the cartons. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can totally freeze your milk if you have room in your freezer. I I don't have extra room in my freezer for milk. <laughs> I do freeze no, cheese often. <laughs> Okay. Now do you do that shredded or just like blocks? I buy block cheese um, because there's more additives in the shredded cheese. So I buy block cheese. If you're, Uh if you're freezing medium cheddar, it does a lot better to frosting and not being crumbly than a sharp cheddar does. And then most of the other ones you can throw in there, but the medium cheddar versus the sharp cheddar, but then I freeze like mozzarella and different things too. So we always have, cheese and butter and stuff extra in the freezer um, that I get when it's on sale. Yeah. Yeah. Those are staples. Okay. So what tips do you have for seasonal spring cleaning and freezer rotation to help save money on groceries, you know, without completely emptying your freezer? That's the thing. I feel like I, sometimes I just want to completely empty everything. So that way I know everything is fresh and we do that to an extent every once in a while, but there's always going to be things in there. So yeah. What are your tips on that? So three times a year, I normally do it in the springtime around this time. And then in January and also right when school's getting back in session, I do like a big inventory of the house. So the January inventory, I'm literally going through every single item and trying to see what I can use up and I keep a list and then I just kind of mark it off over the year. But that spring and the fall one, I'm really checking the freezers. Um, And for that to help like save families money, like people don't think about, oh, well, right now, like we have one day that was 80 degrees and another day that was 40, like back to back, you know, like, right, we still have days that Mm -hmm. we want to use the oven, but in another month, we won't want to use the oven as much, you know, so what are those batch cooked meals that are in the freezer that you know, lasagnas and different things that I've made that need to go into the oven that I can use up right now during the springtime. And then it's not sitting there until next October and getting right. freezer burned and stuff. So, you know, during this March, April, early May is really when I'm trying to use up any of those oven kind of items that I have stocked in the freezer. And then the same thing in the, um, We have like September to October, even in October, we still have some nice days where it's not raining. (laughs) Sometimes Mm -hmm. our September is better than our July here in the Seattle area for not having rain, Um, but to be able to barbecue. So I'm really trying before the weather changes in the fall to use up any like hot dog buns or different things that I had bought just to put on the barbecue, you know, those summer kind of items that you really don't want in December, but to really go through your freezer and look and see what you can be using up and it not sitting for another six months. I don't think a lot of people think that way. Yeah. You know, 
they just get tired of it and like, oh, well, it's almost summer and I'm I'm like super excited for all these summer things, but not thinking about less using up those, you know, those winter items that we had put away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of that. So are you skipping a grocery shopping trip whenever you're doing these like big clearing out everything, kind of cooking through what you have? No, I very rarely skip a shopping trip, but sometimes I'll buy other things that I wouldn't always buy. So if I'm if I'm trying to use up things that I had in the freezer, I might be stocking up on buying almonds or nuts or different things. This last shopping trip, I was stocking up buying cheeses. I hadn't bought cheese in a while and I had extra money in the budget. Right now, it's just my husband and I home. And so we base it on $135 per person to, to buy for the groceries. And we keep that money in a save, separate account that's only for groceries for the whole entire year. And then whatever's left over, because I don't spend it all when I go grocery shopping, then I put that extra money aside for like our larger meat purchases or during harvest season when I'm wanting to can and buying stuff. So that money is always put in on paydays and it's there, you know, so I can go grocery shopping at any time. But when we had a whole house full, we had four under seven for a while here. Wow. And then we have college age kids too. So when they, they're coming home, like our family size can vary <laughs> all the time. Yeah. As a and foster family. Yeah. As a foster family. So we would max out at a thousand dollars a month, but that $75 that I would set aside for meat, that would still be the same $75 that I would set aside into a savings account. And then once a year I do our meat purchase. So there's enough money in there. Okay. So you are including in your 135, you're including the meat and the milk as well. Yeah. Meat, meat, milk. I I would say like, it's normally the items that families can buy on food stamps because that's what I'm trying to help other families with. I do because we buy paper towels once a year. I do have that (laughs) on the list too, but my makeup and different things, those are personal care items. Those that's on a different yeah. budget. So groceries and food. Yeah, the really the only things besides groceries and food are garbage sacks and paper towels. But again, like I buy a thing of paper towels once a year. So it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> but right. Um, yeah. You need all those for your strawberry in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> it actually doesn't take very much. Like because we don't use paper towels for anything else. We just put them in the jars. Like right. I literally only use like 10 paper towels a month, like not yeah. Bowls, and to, like to not pieces. waste the strawberries. Yeah. yeah 100% yeah. worth it. <laughs> so, and you can put cloth yeah. at the bottom if you don't want to use paper towels or napkins, but sometimes like raspberries will stain the cloth and I'd rather not use bleach and not have it stained, mm-hmm. you know. Right, right. All right. Taking a break from this episode to tell you about today's sponsor, Carly Jean, Los Angeles. Carly Jean is a mother of four. She has a small company based out of LA where she creates these beautiful capsule wardrobe collections with simple, wearable, classic items that you can build your closet so that you can look really put together without a whole lot of effort, which is exactly what I like to do. I like to have these kind of closets where I can just reach in, grab a couple of things. A lot of times I don't even put the laundry away. It'll just go from the washer to the dryer to the basket. And I want to just be able to grab something and put it on and look nice again without any effort as a busy mom. I just don't have the time. And Carly Jean's clothing really fits the bill for all of that. The clothes work through many different seasons. I have a couple of these long cardigans that I wear with absolutely everything. It works during not pregnant, not nursing, pregnancy, nursing. It layers well. There's these tank tops that are nice and long that work for me through all the different seasons of life. Very beautiful dresses that I'm especially enjoying right now in the summer. They pair very well with a crossback apron. <laughs> Loving them for that. CJL clothing is classic, timeless, and meant to be lived in. It's not pieces that are just worn for one occasion and never again. And it makes it really easy because they're already curated together. You can pretty much anything on the site would look beautiful together. All of the CJLA basics are made right here in the US, so I love to be supporting a company that prioritizes that. Carly Jean is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners a 20% off coupon code for the entire site. This is a one-time use code, farmhouse20. So if you go to Carly Jean Los Angeles, 
and load up your cart with some capsule wardrobe items that will help you look great this summer without a whole lot of effort. Again, use the code farmhouse20 over at carlyjeanlosangeles.com. Okay, so let's go into some audience questions. We always do this with every episode. Whenever I say who the guest is going to be, we ask for questions to just hear what people want to hear us talk about. So the first topic is snacks. Snacks can get really expensive, but they're also hard to find time to make. I know your kids' ages and the number varies a lot. What are some of your easy, healthy snacks uh, favorites? So for the strawberries, I've always washed the strawberries. Like even since my kids are little, I've always washed them. It wasn't until we had the foster kids in our house. Um, I call them the littles. Um, we had four under seven mm-hmm. here for three years that I started wow. putting things in glass jars. And it really was like, do you want this or do you want this? And showing them two different jars, like, cause they didn't have the mm-hmm. words for what they wanted for produce items, even though when I would give it to them, they would like it. They just, they didn't grow up with having produce in their house. And so to be able to open up my fridge and it be beautiful and all of these things uh-huh, in glass yeah. jars and they can see it, like it changed everything because all they knew was packaged snacks. And then they came into a household that we have allergies and we have very few things that are processed and in packages, packages. ever. <laughs> um, now that um, mm-hmm. my girls are away, we don't have as many allergies here in the house as we did when they were all home. But first, first thing for snacks for us is we open the fridge. Snacks come from the fridge in our household. We teach them to eat a rainbow every single day. We try to give them options between different fruits and vegetables and have them help us in the prepping and the washing. And then they're more excited about it too, or the growing of it. Then they're really excited about it. So most, most of our, you know, household snacks are snacks coming from the fridge and then you know, depending on age and stuff, we eat a lot of like nuts and pepperoni and those kind of things, but I'm diabetic. So we don't have a lot of processed things. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. I always joke that I never stock anything that, that if a teenager was like on a rampage on a weekend could eat a whole bunch of, or, and I don't stock things. Like if I had PMS, <laughs> I'd go searching for it. So right. Know, we have chocolate <laughs> kind chips. Of- if I wanted to make cookies, I could make cookies, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Those are some of our favorites too. We do, the kids will grab carrot sticks. We do a lot of yogurt, cheese, dairies, like a big thing for us right now, especially because we're, we have a cow and milk. So we're kind of like, you got to eat yogurt for all of your snacks, but that's one of our top favorites as well. Okay. So let's talk about sourcing. The first question has to do with grocery delivery. This can be like a hot topic for some reason. So people are like really against it. <laughs> so do you think grocery delivery saves you money despite the fees? It sounds like you're not a grocery delivery type of person. The funny thing is, is when I was researching the book, um, I wanted to cut a our research in the grocery course, actually, I wanted to see what other people were buying. And so I started delivering last year for Instacart. Um, so oh, I could have, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I could that's have a good her. way to research. Exactly. Yeah, I was getting ready research. for the TED Talk. I really wanted to like do research and know what people were really buying. And then I would yeah. get people like, I would drop it off at their house and they were like, oh, you picked up my strawberries. You're the strawberry lady. <laughs> Oh so, my goodness. Did that really happen? Oh yeah. Often. Like <laughs> that's people awesome. in my town like know me as the strawberry lady. It's really funny. Uh-huh. But yeah, so I <laughs> I delivered for Instacart last summer as research. But things that made me really sad about Instacart delivery is when I go to the grocery store, I don't necessarily have to have that exact brand, that exact size, that exact whatever, like I'm picking it up and looking at the items, but you know, if one is a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and it's on sale and it's a better deal, then I grab that one instead of, you Mm -hmm. know, like the exact one that I might've thought I was going to walk in to get. You don't get that with Instacart. You don't get the sale prices at the grocery store. And the one that killed me, like every single time that I had to do it, you don't get the buy one, get one free when you buy from Instacart. So seeing somebody buying like a $25 roast and not getting the other $25 roast for free that they should have, if they were at the store, they don't get that. Why would they, why would it not ring up like that? Yeah, they don't, you can't do it. And a lot of people don't realize that 
the Instacart drivers can't give you the receipt because what you see online is a higher percentage for every single mm-hmm. item that I'm picking up than what you're buying. So the store shelf price compared to what you're actually paying for for every single item is higher. And then they charge the service fee and then they charge the tip fee or, you Mm -hmm. you know, pay a tip on top of that. So you're actually getting charged three times for every single item that you're getting. So I I had Instacart delivered during the pandemic because I was scared to go to the grocery store (laughs) at the beginning of it. And um, just knowing like, wow, that seems like we spent a lot for what we got. And then when I started on the other end of it, seeing as the driver end of it, the shopper end of it, like, yeah, yeah, I would never encourage anybody to (laughs) do that. But there's other stores that do free, you know, they grab your stuff. I like to do, I like to pick up my own produce. So it would be hard for me to. What about Walmart Plus? Because I've heard people have told me that Instacart charges and I still am in the camp of like, because of just the way my life is, it definitely makes more sense for me even monetarily to do it that way. But I've been told that Walmart Plus is not like that. Like it doesn't actually charge extra. Is that true? Or do you know? I don't know about Walmart. I okay. Yeah, I did for Instacart. So I don't know. But yeah. again, like if I was walking into the store with four kids, it would be different. You know, I would not be able to walk out. <laughs> not paying extra with things that they and want that's to it the too. Cart. So yeah, I think it depends on a lot of factors. Like yes, the groceries are all each a little bit percentage higher. However, I the last four weeks, my kids had an art class in town, that it was close to the grocery store. And I had to wait for them to get done like my oldest three. And so I did the grocery shopping. It's over now. Like now the that class has ended. But those four weeks, I went to the store because town is like, you know, 10 miles away. And so, you know, it, I don't normally do not that that's that far. But um, I normally do Instacart or Walmart Plus, And I didn't. And I had my three little boys with me during all four of those grocery shopping trips. I'm like, I bought not that I, I mean, I can obviously say no to my kids, but it's such a novel thing for us to go to the store that it was like really fun. And we got them, I let them each time pick out popsicles and a juice box, which is very rare. We don't do that, but we never get those things. And so I'm like, that probably right there was the cost savings mm-hmm. for, and it's, you know, there's no nutritional value out of there. So it wasn't like they were any less hungry because I bought that. So it really was just money lost. Totally fine. Like it was a fun thing to do. But I could see how if I always did stuff like that, it would definitely be cheaper to not do that. (laughs) Yeah, you just have to, you know, do you really, really need groceries in your house? And it's really important that you don't spend an extra $10, then you might need to go to the grocery store and do it yourself. And tell your kids no, right. or your husband no. Like we got cereal the yeah. other day that we didn't need. You yes, know, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and goldfish crackers that I don't normally buy. You know, right? Exactly. And, uh, yeah. You know those kind of things. But you know, when we're talking about having food security in our house and not being able to afford groceries, you know, you really need to think about if you can get more groceries in your home if you went to the store on, on your own, right. you know, and did the shopping uh-huh. and be able to make those better choices. Or if it's better for you not to take nine kids into the grocery store and you know, that's better for you, but those hidden costs on the Instacart and those savings that you're not getting, a lot of people just don't realize that they're not getting them. Um, and so to make people aware of that. Yes. Yeah. That is something to consider. Yeah. If you're on a very, tight grocery budget to know that that exists is very good. And like you said, there are certain things that you can pick out and inspect. For me, it's, and and again, it has to be weighed out. For me, if you're, I'll take whatever, if you're grocery shopping for me, (laughs) like it's fine if you pick out those particular potatoes. But in some situations, like if this was me a decade ago, that would have been for sure enough to deter me from doing it. So I think it just depends on like where you are in your life right now. And then other things, you know, you can have delivered to your house and it doesn't change the price of it at all. So yeah, um, you know, right. Order from different places and, and it arrives and it's lovely and (laughs) all of the things. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. There's, there's certain places to pick and choose convenience and when it makes sense to go do it yourself. And then, For sourcing meat, we do a yearly meat order. So we normally order half of a 
a beef, half a cow once a year or half of a hog once a year. And then those are local farmers. So um, for that, okay. I would suggest asking like on your local Facebook groups, who is doing that, who, <laughs> who the farmers are in your area that sell you know, beef by the year, you know, and so normally yeah. you pay that upfront, you pay a deposit. And then sometimes depends on it is sometimes you have to pay a monthly payment until it's done for a year. And then sometimes it's just ready and you can pick it up. But asking in your local Facebook groups is normally the best way to try to figure that out or checking with your local butcher mm -hmm. if you're looking to source meat. So some of the the paid subscription boxes aren't always the best deal if you're trying to fill up your freezer and you have room for that. Oh, right. Yeah. No, they're they're convenient and they're nice in some cases, but definitely not the cheapest way to do it. Have you worked out the numbers with buying half a beef versus just picking up meat at the grocery store? And how does that compare? We normally spend around $1,200 a year on meat. So it ends up being about $100 a month. Does that include processing for mm -hmm. you guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little bit yeah. higher here, I think. Yeah. It's around $1,200 a year, you know, give or take how big the cow is, all the things. But I took my grandma to the grocery store yesterday and she True. bought like one little package of hamburger and it was $23. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, like I was freaking out because it just oh, seemed wow. like it was so much, you know, and all of the things, but being able to, you know, buy those items that we for sure are going to use and we're going to use all the way. It just, it makes sense for our family to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Us too, for sure. Also just quality. It's, that's what I'm going for more than anything else. Like it could be more expensive, but it would still be worth it to me to have that good high quality meat. I want to take a quick break from this episode to tell you about something that I absolutely love in my kitchen, and that is Redmond Real Salt. Up till now, I use that in my cooking. I use it in my ferments. Whenever you make foods from scratch, like bone broth and sauerkraut, you use a lot of salt. Now I'm into this cheese making thing where I also am making a brine. I need a high quality salt in large quantities. So I'm buying these huge buckets and bags of salt and the place that I have found to source them from that is the least expensive, but then the highest quality, it's just that blend of both, is Redmond Real Salt. It's the only salt I've used in my kitchen for a while now. <laughs> I'm trying to think of exactly how long. Definitely over a year. Redmond has kindly offered Simple Farmhouse Life listeners a 15% off discount. By using my link, it'll automatically be applied after you use my link, whenever you add something to your cart and you go to checkout, there will be 15% taken off. My link is bit.ly forward slash farmhouse redmond. B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash farmhouse redmond, all lowercase. Bit.ly is case sensitive, I've learned lately. So make sure you're typing that in all lowercase to get 15% off Redmond Real Salt. If you are a from scratch cook like myself, I highly recommend the 10 pound bag or gallon bucket. I've ordered it either way, but I really like buying it in bulk because I can use the discount code for a larger purchase, which means that I'm getting more off. Again, head to bit.ly forward slash farmhouse Redmond to get Redmond real salt in your kitchen. So what are your tips on healthy, good quality protein as far as, you know, which, which cuts and which things are you avoiding as far as budget goes? Well, one of the kind of funny things is we have a soy allergy. All of us girls in the house have a soy allergy. And one of my daughters, we also thought for years she had an egg allergy. And we actually found out it was getting commercial eggs that were soy fed. The chickens were soy fed that would oh. transfer it into the, um, the byproduct, the eggs. And so... She ironically has also been a vegetarian since she was seven years old. And so we, after we found this out, like years into her being a vegetarian and her being able to get eggs back into her diet, after we found out if we raised our own chickens, she could eat them. We now think that if she was willing to um, try to eat meat again, and it was grass fed and not grain fed with soy, it would be okay. Like her body was naturally telling us. Mm -hmm. that she couldn't handle the soy in the grains. So a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people are, are allergic to soy and don't even think about grains that the, you know, the cows are eating or different animals are eating. So 
knowing that if you have an allergy for something like that, it could be showing up in other places that you had no idea that it was showing up in is a big thing. And then, yeah, we, for like me, we just buy the normal, we don't get anything crazy. Well, you can get some really crazy stuff when you um, buy a cow. So we don't do the tongues. Oh, we yeah. don't do random weird things, you know, like <laughs> we have just the basic things that we would use <laughs> in our house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was listening to, I think it was a, I think it was Joel Salatin recently on a podcast and he was talking about how it used to be way back in the day before we were able to produce grain like we are now with all of our modern machinery that the expensive meat was the chicken and pork because they couldn't just live on grass like cows can. And the peasant meat was was beef, which is so interesting because now I think people think of steak and, you know, that's like the more expensive meat. I still think I still think pound for pound you can do better with beef than you can anything other yeah. things. But yeah, thinking about those high quality protein sources that you get the most protein, fat, all the things that you need without, you know, with the least cost is something to consider. That to me, in a lot of ways, is a is a really smart way to look at it, like calorie for calorie, pound for pound, protein for protein, what's giving the most nutrition for my dollar. Those are the places that I would think about first if I was thinking about cutting really small percentages from the grocery budget. So we do like whenever I make ground hamburger, like ground anything for taco meat or meatloaf or anything, I am trying to buy the best meat that we can. So for us, it's straight from the farmer, but then I try to stretch out that meat as much as I can also. So for like when I'm making tacos, Mm -hmm. I'm adding beans and peppers and onions to that and I'm stretching out taco meat. Um, And then (laughs) taco meat, I think is the very first one that people don't think about to batch cook. So, Mm -hmm. you know, cook up three to five pounds of taco meat and use what you're going to use for dinner and then divide that up and get it into the freezer. And then on a busy night, that's a super easy one to like, I pulled out taco meat and we're having tacos or nachos or whatever, but that, you know, three pounds I can turn into 10 dinners, you know, or, you know, whatever, however big your family is at the time, you know, kind of thing. And then Uh whenever I'm making like meatloafs or meatballs, those kind of things, I'm adding like cauliflower rice to it or a zucchini, other things that I'm hiding in there that helps stretch that meat budget out. So they're still getting the high quality meat, but stretching it out to more dinners. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. What are some of your other go-to fast meals? Because somebody asks in the frequently asked questions, what are easy, cheap, healthy meals that don't take a lot of time to make or prep for? I think you'll agree with me. Um, eggs, because we have chickens. <laughs> There's always eggs yep. that need to be used. Now. Yeah, got but, to. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody that has chickens know that eggs can be anything from <laughs> breakfast to dinner. But we yes. used to have a list of like things that we could eat and have within 30 minutes. Um, It's changed a little bit since our kids have moved and I'm diabetic. So like pasta isn't on the list anymore like it used to be, but. um, Oh yeah, that is a fast one. I know like quesadillas are always like something that's super easy that we have. I do a Mexican quinoa, like one pot dish that's on the blog. Um, That's really great. It's vegetarian and I can freeze extra of it, which is great. I love anything that I can freeze ahead of time. But I do a lot of one night a week, I try to make something that I can put in the freezer. So I have it for dinner that night and I can have, you know, two to four other nights. And then at least like two times a week, we're rotating just straight meals out of the freezer that I'm not cooking that night, which which helps a lot and saves money. Yeah, that is nice to have that for go to. What are some of your tricks for using up eggs? We've been trying to come up with a lot lately and I'll tell you one of mine. My daughter has been making this custard because we also have a lot of milk. And so we put a dozen egg yolks in it and we've been making marshmallows with the egg whites. But then I got really sick of them. I'm like, I've had too many of those. Like I'm, I'm done with those. And we learned that you can make an angel food cake with a low amount of sugar and flour and a dozen egg whites. So I'm like, there's, that's how we can get all <laughs> like, and then of course meals like quiches and we do breakfast tacos for any meal of the day. So what are, do you have any egg tricks? There's a lemon bar recipe on our blog also that takes like a dozen eggs, um, which is nice. Oh, too. see, I'll have, have to check that out. Even if it takes a about- dozen eggs, I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> 
That's really high protein, <laughs> even if it's a dessert. Yeah, yeah. So, and that one's allergy friendly and diabetic friendly also because of what we need for our family. But um, yeah, I would. So, what's the, sh- I have to look it up. What's the sweetener in it? Um, monk fruit, probably. It's been a year since I've been oh, there. So, monk fruit okay. is what we need to use most of the time here. But yeah, so. Okay. If everybody is home, we are, well, I'm diabetic. And then with my reflective sympathetic dystrophy, we have any additives or preservatives flare me up. Um, And then normally it's not that day. It's like three days later, like, oh, I went out to eat. And now Wednesday, I don't feel good, you know, or whatever. Right. But um, soy, gluten, dairy, raw sugar cane have been our allergies that we've been dealing with for years. Oh, wow. And then the one vegetarian in the house. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I I really do know how to cook with, you know, all these different things. Uh But um, yeah. So the lemon bars is a good one for eggs. I went random on you and came back. But the lemon bars for eggs is a good one. And then I normally make like egg bites, like Starbucks, you know, egg bites now. And uh-huh, use yes. a bunch and put them in the freezer. So then on mornings when I don't want to cook, they're easy to defrost and then warm them back up. So we mm-hmm. use a lot of those in the spring and summer. Um, and then I freeze them for the rest of the year when we don't have as many eggs. That's a good idea. So do you have that recipe on the blog as well? I don't because I just kind of throw in whatever I'm using. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. That, that is one. Like that a I little do sort of do. like a miniature egg casserole. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do them. I use them in the super cubes, like silicone things occasionally too, which hold up to uh-huh. like one cup, which is like a perfect portion uh-huh. for me for breakfast. But yeah. So whenever I'm trying to yeah. use up peppers or onions or I have breakfast sausage, yeah, spinach, I'm just throwing those all together and then cooking them up and then putting them in the freezer. Okay. That's a good idea. I kind of forgot about egg casseroles. Like that's something that I used to do a lot of. And then I, you know how it is like you, you do things a lot and then all of a sudden somehow it gets out of your habit and then you completely forget that it exists. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. That's why I keep um all of the meals that I'm, I make in like one little notebook. And so then it's nice to be able to flip back and like, oh, last May, I really wanted ribs or whatever it was. And to be able to look back, um, Mm -hmm. even like in March, I remember like, oh, I had Rubens last year in March, you know, so then it was nice to be able to see that. Yeah, you know, seasonally how things change and sound good. And, and when you're thinking of the ideas, it's nice to know what your own family is wanting Mm -hmm. to eat and having a list of those. Uh huh. It is nice. I I I rely heavily on my blog and YouTube channel as that record for me. I'm like, what was I cooking last April or last May? I'm <laughs> looking at that helps to refresh my memory. Okay, so tell us where we can best find you. What resources you you have? You've mentioned a few different books and your blog. So where do you want to send people who would like to know more? Would like to learn more about budgeting? and meal planning, and then keeping the food fresh that you have so that you actually use it all. So we post something brand new every single day on the Cross Legacy Instagram page. So I always joke, I have a mailing list, but I always joke that's my mailing list. Like if anything new is happening, exciting, anything's, you know, going on, it's going to happen on the Instagram page. And then it gets you know, forward it out everywhere from there, but everywhere on all social media okay. platforms, I'm the cross legacy and then the cross legacy.com. And we have a book called I bought it now what, which you can buy on the cross legacy or it's an Amazon bestseller, which is kind of cool. And then, um, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we have a grocery course also that it teaches you how I take inventory and rotate food and how I buy things how I keep to the budget. And that is available on the Cross Legacy also. And that's a virtual class that you can join anytime. Like I joined your blog course. (laughs) Awesome. So many great resources. And I think, you know, they're all so helpful for people because we do not want to be part of the statistic of throwing away 60% of our food. Right. That's the worst. That's the, if, if anything's bad for the grocery budget, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. And then I have over 280 <laughs> videos on YouTube also. So um, we normally put a new video up on YouTube every week. But Instagram is like my baby awesome. is what I say. <laughs> yeah. The hub. Fun. This is where, yeah, it, everything branches yeah. out from there. Yeah. We'll also leave down in the show notes or the description box any of the links that you talked about on here. So thank you so much for joining us. This has just been so exciting. Like you literally have changed my life and it's just so neat to be able to talk to you. 
Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode and I will see you in the next one.